Drew Dinkmeyer from Establish the Run with another video tutorial on how to use the optimizer tool at the solver. Today's tutorial, we're specifically going to look at the advanced settings and how to help make improved optimized lineups. First, before we get into the advanced settings, let's look at these optimizer settings where there's quick check boxes that allow you to make quick rules such as QB stack, avoid opposing defense, maximum salary, game stack, avoid tight end flex, one skill player per team, so on and so forth. You see some of these are checked already because I've created some advanced rules. This is simply a little quick user checkbox guide if you want to use some of the rules. And if you notice, if I take off these individual rules that I've made, you'll see some of the boxes uncheck. And so it's simply representing what's in the advanced settings tool here. I've made some quick rules we'll look at, but let's first start with the roster and the abilities to set salary constraints, unique players, a max ownership level. If you don't want any individual lineup to go above let's say 115 total ownership. You can also set max player exposure. If you didn't want to own any player over 30%, you can set this positionally as well. You can simply edit those. Max players versus defense, um, variance percentage, which is simply a percentage of standard deviation you're gonna put on the player's projection that it's going to run in each individual lineup. And you can do this by position as well, which I find really, really useful. So I can make my positional variance a little bit different by each position. In those positions that are high variance, I can rank up the variance. This is simply a percentile level that I'm applying. You can choose which positions you want to use in flex. If you never want the tight end in the flex spot, you can simply uncheck it there. From the stacks area, you can simply build out how you want these stacks to look. And so if I'm building lineups that have QBs with at least two wide receiver or tight end, I can make that one or two or zero, not have these rules if I want. You can also choose which teams are included in these stack rules. So I might say I want two wide receivers and tight ends with every team, but let's say I don't want that to be the case with Baltimore. I click Baltimore, I click exclude them. And if that box is unchecked, it'll mean that all these stacks are made with Baltimore. If I check it, it means it'll be made for all other teams without Baltimore. So you can choose which teams you want the rules to apply to, which is really useful. You can create bring back rules, other rules that I like to have like QB with exactly zero D special teams from the same game. And you can choose the same team, opponent, same game. I like to make sure my quarterback is not paired with his own defense or with his opponent's defense as I think it limits upside. In the team section, you can choose to force players from specific teams. So you could say, I want one player from Buffalo and I want one player from Kansas City on this slate. You can choose to use rules like this or not. I very rarely do, but it's there for you if you want to. Um, simply clicking this plus button if you want to add more rules there. On the restriction side, positionally, you can make rules that suggest, hey, I only want two at most running back wide receiver or tight end from the same team unless they are stacked. And you can check this box or uncheck it if you wanna set the rules globally. In this case, what this is saying is, unless the quarterback is, unless the quarterback is one of the skill position uh, players quarterbacks here, you're only gonna get two skill pos position players max. So you'd never have a lineup that has Stefan Diggs, Gabe Davis, and Dawson Knox, unless it had Josh Allen. You can make this one, two, three, so on and so forth. I also used to let use rules like at most one running back from the same team as well. Um, you can make rules stats by lineup. So this is one where you can say, I wanna make sure I have at least one running back or wide receiver where the ownership percentage is less than 10% to make sure that you get contrarian. You can put in projections or ceilings of less than, greater than, equals, between. You can customize the lineup optimizer however you'd like. You can also use this tool that I asked them to build in called stats by team. Now this is more useful for me in NBA than it is in NFL, but you can set rules like I wanna use at most one wide receiver where the projection is greater than 20 from the same team. And you can choose which teams you wanna include this with. The reason you might use a rule like this is if you have two very high salaried players that are difficult to fit in and likely are going to eat away at the ceiling from one another. This happens more frequently in basketball with teammates like LeBron James and Anthony Davis, but it can happen in football too. If Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis were both priced over 8,000 and they both had big projections, but you didn't want them together because you thought it would hurt the overall upside of your lineup, you could set rules like this specifically for Buffalo, or you can use them universally as well. I think it's a handy new, new uh, feature as well. 
Also, you can set team level constraints. Uh, we have the force button that we noted up here on the team side, but you can also say, look, I don't want any San Francisco players on this slate. So you can use this as a well, and you can set it globally as well with mins and maxes across players. You can set min max groups, like one I used on Sunday was at most one of Isaiah McKenzie or Khalil Shakir, two players competing for playing time that I thought would limit each other's upside. I chose to make sure I only had one of the two in any of my lineups. You can also create if then rules. So if the lineup contains or doesn't contain Josh Allen in this instance, then use at least one of Devin Singletary or the Bills D. This is me saying that if I wanted all my lineups to have either Josh Allen or Devin Singletary or the Bills D, this is what that rule would look like. So that's a quick little look at how to go through the advanced settings over at the solver. Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it helps you make better optimized lineups and allows you to put your own spin on the lineup portfolio that you would like to create.